Hey there, tech fans. Rick here from the O-Ray team with an overview of the HD EX104 1x4 HDMI Media Splitter and Extender Kit. This product was engineered to make it very simple for you to share any HDMI media source with four remote locations at distances up to 395 feet or 120 meters away over a single Cat5, Cat5e, or Cat6 cable. If you need to support more than four locations, a second model, the HDEX108, is available that doubles the number of those remote locations to eight. The product features full support for high-definition 1080p media content and includes infrared blaster kits for each of the locations that will pick up the remote control signals from those locations and transmit those signals back over the same network connection to the primary location so you can actually control the content you're watching. Now, as part of this overview, I'd like to start with an unboxing of the product just to show you everything that's included with the kit, and then I'll list the audio and video standards the product can support. I'll take a closer look at all of the modules and explain exactly what they do, and then I'll come back and actually install the kit here to show you just how easy it'll be to use with your own equipment at home. So let's get started with the unboxing. Inside the box, you'll find the transmitter module, a power supply, and the infrared blaster that you'll use with the transmitter module. It has integrated brackets where you can mount this up off the ground and out of the way. Each of the receiver modules includes its own power supply, an infrared blaster module, and a bracket system you can use to mount these up off the ground and out of the way. And finally, a full instruction manual is included that has network diagrams that are needed for the connections between these modules and the specifications and information you'll need to understand how to use this with your own equipment at home. Now, if you stay tuned, next I'll explain the audio and video standards of product and support, and then I'll take a closer look at all of the components and explain exactly what they do. The product supports full high-definition 1080p media content, it allows you to easily extend any HDMI media source 395 feet or 120 meters over a single Cat5, Cat5e, or Cat6 network cable. It is HDCP compliant. Its audio support includes 7.1 surround sound as well as stereo digital audio. And an IR blaster kit is also included to make control of the media device very easy. The O-Ray HD EX104 and EX108 can be used with most devices with an HDMI port, including streaming media devices, DVD players, laptops, cable boxes, and game systems. Included with the kit is a transmitter, a power supply for that transmitter. This is a standard 5 volt 2 amp DC power supply. This end plugs into the wall. The other end has a barrel connection on it, which plugs into the back of the transmitter and supplies all the power you'll need to operate the product. Also included is an infrared blaster module. Now, even though these look similar, they are different. The one used with the transmitter is labeled IR out, and it essentially rebroadcasts the remote control signals that are being sent from these remote locations to control the media. You wanna make sure that you match this up with the transmitter, and it says IR out. Each of the receivers come with a similar set of accessories that include a power supply. Again, another 5 volt, 1 amp DC power supply. This end plugs into the wall, this end plugs into the back of the module, and that's again all the power you'll need to operate it. You'll find an infrared blaster module. This one's labeled infrared in because it essentially collects all the remote control signals from these remote locations and sends those over that same network connection back to the primary location to be broadcast out of the infrared out module. You'll also find a bracket kit that you can use to mount these modules up off the ground and out of the way. And then finally, a full instruction manual that gives you connection diagrams, explains what all the indicators do, and how you'll want to hook this up with your own equipment once you get it home. Now we'll take a closer look at the modules and I'll start with the transmitter. The unit was designed in a full metal enclosure to help minimize outside interference from causing any issues with the sensitive electronics inside. You'll notice mounting brackets that are incorporated into the design on either end that allow you to mount this on the wall and up out of the way. On the front of the unit, there are five indicators across the front. These are LED indicators. When you connect up a remote module to any of the output ports, these will light up. And this last indicator lets you know that you've got network traffic across those connections. Nothing on the bottom to see. On the rear of the module, You've got a reset button that can actually reset the unit if needed. Next to that is your HDMI input port. This connects to whatever media you want to share to those remote locations. This is where the infrared blaster module connects. Again, you want to make sure you use the IR out. These are four network connections for the four remote locations. So location one, two, three, and four. Again, that's a standard Cat5, Cat5e, or Cat6 cable. And then finally, the DC input port here that's used with the power supply. 
Each of the receiver modules feature full metal enclosures to help minimize outside interference from causing any issues with the product. On either end of the module, you'll find mounting holes that can be used with the included brackets to mount the unit up off the ground and out of the way. On the one end, you'll find a power input port on the left, and that's used with the included power supply, and the minute you plug that into the wall and make a connection to the module, the power indicator will light up. To the right of that is the network port. This is the connection you'll make back to the transmitter again with a CAT5, CAT5e, or CAT6 cable. The two indicators to the right let you know you have a valid network connection, so when you make that connection back to the transmitter, the network link light will come on, and once data is being transferred to this remote location, this light right here, which is called the data transmission light, will actually flicker to let you know the data is being transmitted. On the other end, you'll find a reset button that can be used to reset the product. Next to that is an HDMI output port, a standard HDMI connection, and this is what you'll use to connect up the monitor at that remote location. And finally, to the right of that is the infrared blaster module plug-in port. And with the receivers, you want to make sure you use the IR in modules. You'll plug that in there, put it someplace where you can actually see it with your remote control so it can collect those signals and send those back to the transmitter. And that's pretty much it for the modules. Now I'll show you the connections you'll need to make to use this product with your own equipment. For this demonstration, I've set up four monitors that represent my four remote locations. I have a small media player right there that's looping a video on this bottom monitor. That's my media source, and it's the content that I'll distribute to these remote locations. I've got the transmitter in front of me and four receiver modules. Now, the first set of connections I'll make are to the transmitter, and I'll disconnect my media source from the monitor, standard HDMI cable, and that goes to the HDMI input port on the back of the transmitter. Now, I've already plugged the power supply in. I'll connect that up, barrel connection to the power on the back of the transmitter. And once that's done, I'll start connecting up my receiver modules. I'll start with these two. I have HDMI cables coming from the monitors already, and these plug into the HDMI output port on each of the receivers. And then I'll add power to the receivers. And again, I've plugged in these power supplies, so I'll just add the barrel connection to the unit. The minute I do, the blue light comes on. What that's indicating is that these receivers are going through a power on self-test where they're checking the internal electronics to make sure it's working okay. It's also checking the resolution of the monitor so it can make whatever adjustments are needed to give you the best possible picture. Now I'll connect up these two receivers and I'll start with the top monitor. HDMI cable to the HDMI output port on the receiver. I have to add a cable to this bottom one. So I've got a standard HDMI cable here connect it up to the monitor and to the second receiver. Again, HDMI output from this receiver. And then I'll connect up the two power cables. I've already plugged these in. And they just plug right into the power input port. And again, the blue light's coming on and starting a power on self-test. And at this point, we're all set to go. The only connection I'm missing is the network cable between the transmitter and the four receiver modules. Now these can be up to 395 feet away, but you want to use a high quality CAT5, CAT5e, or CAT6 cable between them. For this demonstration, I'm going to keep the cable short. I've got a couple of CAT5 cables right here, and I'll connect that up to the first port and the second port, and then I'll connect it up to the RJ45 connection on here and on the second receiver module. Now what's going to happen is the transmitters are going to start handshaking with the receivers, trying to make a connection, and once it makes that connection, it'll start distributing that video and audio to that remote location. I've got two more receivers over here, so I use two more LAN cables, a yellow and a white, and I'll connect those up to the two LAN ports on the receivers on this side. And again, these were going to take a little bit more time to sort of negotiate, but once all four of these are seen by the transmitter, it'll start distributing that audio and video to those remote locations. Now, these two are already up, and these two are coming up, but it's making adjustments for the resolution of the monitor, as well as the resolution of the content that I'm distributing. And there you go. So there are all four of them, and again, it's one single input, and I've got distribution to four different outputs that can be up to 395 feet away. And you can use the infrared blaster kits as well to receive remote control signals from these locations and send those back over the same LAN cables to the primary location where it'll actually rebroadcast those remote control signals to control the media you're watching. And it really is just that simple. I hope you found this overview of the HDEX 104 1x4 HDMI Media Splitter and Extender Kit helpful. 
It really does provide a very simple way of sharing any HDMI media source with four remote locations up to 395 feet or 120 meters away over a single Cat5, Cat5e, or Cat6 LAN cable. The product provides full support for a wide range of resolutions, all the way up to 1080p high definition video, and the kit also includes infrared blasters that will relay the remote control signals from those remote locations back to the primary location so you can actually control the content you're watching. Everything you need to get started is included with the kit, and with a few simple connections, you can be up and running in no time. Until next time, thanks for watching.